so we were discussing the plastic hinge modeling approach for uh, inelastic or nonlinear modeling of beams and other elements the basic idea is that we uh, lump the inelastic action at certain locations of the element in the form of uh, nonlinear action versus deformation relationships right so uh, we for example were discussing the case of rc or steel beams uh, which can be modeled using two nonlinear hinges located at both ends and the primary input required for a particular beam uh, is moment versus rotation m theta uh, we have seen that uh, in the local axis of cross section 2 and 3 axis m3 is the primary bending moment for a particular beam in which we are interested so uh, m3 versus theta 3 to be more precise uh, will be the plastic hinge property which we can assign to both ends so uh, we discussed that this particular hinge property m3 theta 3 has two main components one is the backbone curve and other is the cyclic rule how it will unload and reload from any particular location right and then there are different types of rules available or we call them hysteretic behavior they are available we can just attach a particular hysteretic rule with a particular backbone curve right so let me just summarize this this curve monotonic curve it can have different shape we can give it customize it it is backbone and uh, the cyclic behavior for example one of the very basic cyclic behavior is elastic perfectly plastic that uh, it the line will remain elastic then it will become plastic and then it will follow the same initial stiffness while unloading if it unloads uh, from a point which is beyond yield point if it unloads from a point before yield point it will follow the same initial line right then it can yield in the opposite direction and then when it unloads it will follow the same initial stiffness so this is one rule it is called epp or elastic perfectly plastic there can be a certain other rule for example one cyclic behavior or hysteretic behavior is called flag shape behavior it it looks like this like this like a flag in both directions right so certain elements can follow this behavior also uh, certain precast elements and some other elements uh, for example rocking shear walls they follow this behavior Reinforced concrete structures f follow what we mostly refer to as the Takeda model where the unloading stiffness can be different from the initial loading stiffness right and then it same is in the opposite direction something like this then uh, for example isotropic behavior or uh, some other cyclic behaviors are available metals mostly follow elastic plastic behavior it can be like this that some post yield stiffness ratio is there but unloading stiffness is still equal to the initial loading stiffness so there can be different templates of uh, cyclic behavior we call them as hysteretic models or hysteresis is this phenomena so there are many models available in different programs which we can assign to our plastic hinge backbone curve depending upon what type of that of beam is right if we have a steel beam uh, we know that uh, a bilinear kind of a behavior is more suitable for this plastic hinge if it is concrete beam then maybe takeda model or any other degrading model because concrete degrades as it undergoes the cycles of loading right so uh, two components one is backbone and other is hysteretic model so let me just write number one and then number two one important concept which which i should discuss right now is the acceptance criteria and that should uh, directly be related to this backbone and say hysteretic behavior 
So, acceptance criteria, this is also an input which you have to provide uh, while defining the plastic hinge property and acceptance criteria simply means capacities or uh, you can say uh, the capacities corresponding to different performance levels. Just like I gave an example in, in, in that particular quiz that I gave you the uh, plastic rotation corresponding to IO level, plastic rotation corresponding to LS and CP. These numbers which means the capacities corresponding to each performance level, they are called acceptance criteria. right? So, they are a, a third input which you have to provide while defining a plastic hinge. So, backbone and hysteretic model that form actually the action deformation curve. right? So, both 1 and 2 are actually uh, the action deformation behavior and this number 3 is 3 capacities on top of that action deformation behavior. 3 capacities in which we may be interested in after the analysis. 3 capacities uh, for which we want the program to calculate DC ratios and then we can check after the analysis which of the capacity was overcome by the demand and which was not overcome. Right? So, if I give a particular action deformation behavior, now I am more general. So, now, now I am going beyond m theta curve. Any action deformation curve which is defined by a backbone and a hysteretic behavior should also be associated with acceptance criteria three numbers at least should be defined at different points on that curve corresponding to the three performance levels. right? So, if you are following ASC 41 approach, I will explain that may be in next session, uh, which actually defines three performance levels, immediate occupancy, life safety and collapse prevention. So, the capacities corresponding to these three numbers, three performance levels should be defined on that curve. right? So, I should tell uh, the plastic hinge that this is the plastic rotation capacity corresponding to IO, this is LS and then this is CP. right? So, these three numbers is also an input beside the action deformation curve and a hysteretic behavior. So, that program knows that if the this particular strain level or this particular rotation level exceed, uh, then the program will declare that element that it crossed IO level. right? And then if this exceed then that crossed LS level and then it, if this exceed it cross CP level. right? So, we will also tell the program the capacity is corresponding to corresponding to each action deformation curve. Now, it can be moment rotation curve for a beam, it can be a stress strain curve for a material while performing fiber modeling or it can be shear force versus shear deformation curve while defining a shear hinge or torsion versus twist curve while defining a torsion hinge. So, any action deformation curve action versus deformation curve will also be having acceptance criteria associated with that. right? So, we not only provide the complete behavior in the form of full curve, but we also provide three markers on that behavior which the program can use to calculate DC ratios and then tell the performance in terms of that those DC ratios. right? In perform 3D, because perform 3D is not ASC 41 specific. So, you can give your own names to performance levels and you can define as much as 5 performance levels in the positive side of the action deformation curve and negative side of the action deformation curve. But ETAPS follows ASC 41 definitions of performance level. So, it talks in terms of IO, LS and CP only. right? So, you can set IO level capacity corresponding to the initial yield point. LS level can be corresponding to minor damage, still acceptable damage 
and C P can be set as a level uh, deformation capacity at which the structure is going uh, will undergo significant damage or beam will go on significant damage, but still it will not catastrophically reduce uh, to you, you know it, it should not completely fail. So, collapse should still be prevented. So, uh, this is the concept of acceptance criteria. So, please replace the word capacity uh, wherever you find this word as the name indicates it is the it is the number maximum number which is acceptable actually it is capacity right. So, it is for each level I O L S and C P, but this terminology is for a is is ASC 41 terminology and and also previously used by FEMA 356 and other previous documents, but currently uh, E tabs follow this terminology. So, whenever you define a plastic hinge you and associate an action deformation curve with that hinge, it will also ask you to give I O L S and C P in both positive and negative directions of that action and deformation curve, you will give that as an input also right. So, that program after the analysis can tell you uh, for each beam whether it crossed I O level or C P level or L S level or not right. Otherwise, you have to do it manually program will give you for example, this this curve you give as an input for example, this one on the top you give this curve as an input and after the analysis program will put a point on that curve corresponding to demand level. Whatever is the moment and rotation produced by applied loading, it will be shown on that curve on the same curve which you give right. But once you give these I O L S and C P capacities in the form of rotations or deformations, then program can also automatically tell you that whether demand have exceeded I O level or exceeded L S level or C P level or not. So, you can color code elements based on that D C ratio for I O level separately for L S level separately. So, you can define queries like show me all those columns which crossed L S level. So, program will directly sort them color code them based on their D C ratios while using life safety as the as the capacity. So, whichever column have a uh, demand over capacity of life safety as greater than 1 uh, the, the program will color code it as red. Similarly, you can check beams for L S level or C P level or any level. So, you can define different queries and program will color code the elements to quickly give you an idea what damage ha has been caused by this earthquake or this loading right. And then anyways, you can go element by element and extract the element results also to go into more detail of what actually happened with that particular element right. Just like I gave you uh, in, in that test I gave you for one beam I gave you the maximum rotation caused by the, the M C level earthquake and then you yourself calculated the D C ratio or check it that whether that rotation have exceeded a certain performance level or not. This is exactly what the program is also doing, uh, but it is doing at a more larger scale and in a more systematic manner but actually it is doing exactly same thing calculating DC ratios uh, using your given capacities and using the calculated demand by the analysis and simply telling you whether a particular DC ratio have exceeded or not. So, this is the concept of acceptance criteria as I said uh, earlier also. So, let me reiterate also that perform 3D is a more general and more comprehensive program. So, it is not only restricted to a particular terminology of performance levels. So, it asks it, it can allow you to define your own levels. So, for example, this is the backbone curve you give to a particular plastic hinge. You can set your own level, you can say this is my level 1, this is my level 2, level 3, level 4 and level 5. As much as 5 levels performance levels you can define and give them your own names right. So, you can call this first level as minor cracking, you can give your own name and associate a strain corresponding to that minor cracking. So, you can just like you give you define here as I O and give us 
strain or ro rotation or any deformation on the x axis you define the capacity in terms of that number uh, for io ls and cp in perform you can have level 1 level 2 up to level 5 and you can give the capacities in terms of deformations for all those five levels and then you can give your own names to those five levels right so you can define like minor tensile cracking in concrete or minor mild yielding or just yielded then you can have an another performance level named as significant yielding or another level ultimate failure you can give your own names uh, on that stress uh, on that particular action deformation curve and then give the capacities for each level positive side separate negative side separate and then after the analysis you will tell you will ask you will build a query in that program show me all those beams which are just yielded now you know that just yielded is your own performance level which you define so you say that level 4 or just yielded you will put that query in that and program will able will be able to directly tell you that which element uh, has crossed your particular performance level or not crossed right it can color code based on dc ratios so if you define five levels on positive side five on negative side program will calculate five dc ratios for positive five for negative by by, by dividing demand with your given capacities or your given acceptance criteria and if that ratio is greater than one it will tell you at the end of the analysis that that particular action have yielded or have crossed that particular performance level right but etabs doesn't allow you to give your own names to the performance levels so it only uses iols and cp so these are three placeholders right three markers these numbers do not affect your analysis iols and cp capacities uh, whatever the values you give on that curve they are just three markers on on your curve right which the program will actually be using as capacity they do not uh, affect the analysis result so they are like placeholders for three capacities or markers for three capacities so we have already discussed that uh, there are two major types of lumped plasticity hinges in e tabs one is uncoupled which affect only a particular degree of freedom while the others remain elastic uh, and there are coupled hinges which affect more than one degree of freedom and they are used for columns right uh, whenever one action is affecting another action also like axial load is affecting moment we will be going for coupled hinges but if the action is not affected by any other action like in case of a beam moment or flexural action is assumed that it is not affected by the axial load in beam so we just use uncoupled hinge for flexural nonlinearity in beams we will be using m3 hinge for shear nonlinearity in beams we will be using shear v2 hinge right uh, because this is the main shear for beams for axial nonlinearity in truss elements for example or coincentrically loaded columns or piles for example we use axial p and for some rare cases we may also go for minor shear minor moment and torsion also right for columns we have uh, interacting pm to m3 this one for accounting the axial flexural nonlinearity uh, this is for 3d columns but if we want nonlinearity only in one particular direction we can use these two subsets of this more comprehensive uh, hinge pm3 or pm2 i can say that these can be used for uni axially loaded columns but mostly in a real three dimensional structure you will always have a three dimensional column which means a column which is subjected to moments in both directions right so you will be using this one interacting pm to m3 and then there are parametric also which means that uh, you just give few parameters and uh, 
program already have a template for plastic hinge so it will use that one but they are not available for uh, many practical cases of rc columns maybe they are uh, more suitable for uh, like pre stressed columns where they have a parametric cross sectional shape and for steel sections for example and lastly we have the two fiber hinges they are based on the fiber modeling approach we will discuss that later so let me now uh, quickly go through this uh, asc 41 approach of non linear modeling asc 41 is a document Uh, mainly used for the structural evaluation and retrofitting of existing buildings but it is also applicable to new buildings also for the performance evaluation of new buildings so please check that detailed document uh, it is a primary reference for non linear modeling and analysis and it is the reference which will provide you the action deformation behavior for different structural elements right so if you do not have experimental results and if you cannot perform cross sectional analysis to to develop moment rotation curves for your beams and your columns uh, then you you need that reference this reference will provide you guidelines uh, related to modeling parameters and then also guidelines related to related to acceptance criteria so using this document you will be able to not only develop the moment rotation curve for your beam you will also be able to tell what rotation correspond to io is the capacity what corresponding to ls and one what is the corresponding to the cp levels so both modeling parameters and acceptance criteria right both of the information which you need to define a plastic hinge uh, will be available in this document for different structural components steel concrete masonry and other ones so this document provides uh, modeling parameters and acceptance criteria and obviously that is based on extensive testing and research findings right so uh, it will give you that for beams and columns for different materials uh, what moment rotation curves you should use as an input and obviously they are recommended as a function of beam properties and material properties right so we have uh, 41-17 as the latest version available for this this uh, reference right so uh, asc 41-17 follows the moment rotation plastic hinge approach right so this is the very first thing you should know moment versus rotation behavior or this approach it is uh, it doesn't follow the fiber modeling approach right so if you want a plastic hinge in your structural model you need this reference but if you want fiber modeling approach for a particular element the main input is the material stress strain curve which can easily be obtained from a lab right or from the available Uh, stress strain models right so therefore you don't need a particular uh, reference like this if you are following fiber modeling approach because the input required is more easily available it is the material level action deformation curve but here you need a full member level action deformation curve moment versus rotation curve for a particular member beam or a column and that you cannot develop Uh, experimentally for each element so therefore you need a guideline like this so the approach is that it defines a generalized action deformation curve or a or a force displacement force deformation relationship in generalized form for example on y axis it says that q is the action qy is the yield capacity corresponding to that action so the curve will have first line as ab uh, and at one the line will deviate from the straight line for the first time right then uh, it will go to another point which is the ultimate point called c and the plastic rotation from uh, b to c point is denoted as small a right uh, before point b 
the behavior is well defined it is already elastic so you already have the elastic modulus the the i or moment of inertia of your element so from a to b line you don't need to define anything the that input is already there with the program right from b onwards your input is required right so from b onwards up till c point asc 41 calls that plastic rotation as small a from b to the last point on that curve e asc 41 calls it as small b and then uh, the residual action or residual force capacity on y axis uh, it is called small c it is the height from zero capacity up till point d level beyond which the capacity will just be minimum right so from c onwards this the element is going to degrade up till point d and from d onwards uh, there will be only very a small amount of capacity left which is called residual capacity it will be simply like 10 to 20% of the original yield capacity right so c height will be just uh, 0.1 to 0.2 times of the original height corresponding to b point right so and also three place holders or three markers on that curve io ls and cp right it can be Uh, somewhere here because io can be where very minor damage have occurred ls can be where some damage acceptable damage have already occurred and cp can be the last point on that action deformation curve so now imagine that if you are given with three, these six numbers a b and c and io ls and cp these six numbers are given to you for your beam you can plot that curve completely because you can calculate the yield moment of your beam because that dimension and amount of steel and everything is given so b point can be directly calculated from simple calculations for your beam from b to c you need to assume some strain hardening or uh, some over strength and you know already the small a is the deformation then from b to last point of the curve b is the deformation and then you already know small c also how much i should uh, bring it down so that it only reduce to a residual number and then on that curve black line you are all you if you are also given with these three numbers uh, then if all these six numbers are available you can easily define your plastic hinge right so what asc 41 does is that it provides you these six numbers for all your beams and columns and all elements right it provides detailed tables using which you enter using the beam properties which can affect the capacity of your beam and you enter that table and finally pick these six numbers small a small b small c and io ls and cp rotations capacity and these six numbers are enough for you to come back to this curve and define your complete moment rotation right so in e tabs you can do it manually using asc 41 or it also provides you the feature to directly pick those numbers for you uh, from asc 41 and define that curve for you right asc 41 provides the template of that force deformation behavior or action deformation behavior and in that uh, you just need small a small b small c to plot that curve along with the yield capacity of that particular action right so if you know all those inputs you can uh, plot that black line and then uh, you can also mark io ls and cp on that black line and that is what is required for uh, for defining a plastic hinge right so small a small b small c are called modeling parameters and the rotations corresponding to io ls and cp they are called acceptance criteria these will be in the form of radians right so io ls and cp acceptance criteria is actually uh, theta io theta ls and theta cp these three numbers are called acceptance criteria 
they will also be coming from the ASC 41 tables. So before I end this discussion, let me show you for beams uh, what table ASC 41 provides and then you we can keep on discussing in the next session about what inputs are required in that table. So here this is the table 10-7 from ASC 41. It says that it is the modeling parameters and acceptance criteria for nonlinear procedures, reinforced concrete beams. So, this table will help you for your beam elements RC sections, will help you plotting that uh, moment rotation curve for you directly. So, each row is providing you six numbers plastic rotation in the form of radians, which is small a, small b. Now, you know what it means a is from yield point up till ultimate point rotation and b is from yield point up till the last point of uh, action deformation curve beyond which there is no physical meaning of keeping the analysis continued right so that is the last point so b is that ro uh, ro uh, rotation it is also in the form of radians c is the residual strength ratio right it is the ratio of uh, uh, the residual strength uh, to the to the overall yield strength right 0.2 means 20 percent of the yield right so c is a dimensionless number but a and b have uh, they are in radians and from the same uh, one row if you see you can also pick iols and cp performance levels plastic rotation angles in the form of radians so for each row of this table you can pick six numbers and they are required to define the plastic inch. Now, just uh, see what inputs are required to enter in that table. Rho minus rho prime over rho balance. We will discuss that later, but just see what are they. Rho minus rho prime over rho balance. Rho is the longitudinal reinforcement ratio. Positive is rho and rho prime is in the negative side, which means top reinforcement ratio divided by rho balance the reinforcement ratio which will ensure a balanced failure between concrete and steel that can be easily calculated using simple design expressions they are available second thing you require to enter in a particular row is the transverse reinforcement whether it is conforming or non-conforming uh, the the criteria to check whether it is conforming and or non-conforming is written at the bottom I will explain that in the next session, but just currently you need to know that not only the reinforcement is controlling what is small a, small b, small c, the transfer steel is also affecting the capacity in the, lo in the uh, longitudinal direction or flexural capacity. Transfer steel is affecting your flexural capacity. The more confined your concrete is, if it is conforming, uh, it will give you a larger A and B, which means the structure can go into more la large plastic rotations without failure, more ductile. Uh, and third is V over BD under root FC prime. And FC prime should be the expected F FC prime. So I'll discuss that later. But just see, V is what? The shear force in that beam. B and D are dimensions and fc prime is the concrete strength so all inputs which can affect your capacity they are there already in just in order to pick those six numbers right so this is a chart or guideline or you can say a tool which you can use to quickly develop your uh, moment rotation curve without performing uh, analysis or without performing the experiment right so this table or these numbers all these numbers they are developed based on extensive testing extensive research right so we'll continue discussing that later but once you finalize your particular row then you pick these six numbers plot the moment rotation curve and on that iols and cp define that in e-tabs and give it to a plastic hinge and assign it to a particular beam right so this is the overall process for plastic hinge modeling of uh, RC beams. Similar table, similar kind of table is available for steel beams, 
similar kind of table is available for rc columns of rectangular shape separate table for circular columns and all other elements so in asc 41 you will see different chapters uh, each will be providing the modeling parameters and acceptance criteria in the form of generalized force deformation curve so it first define a general force deformation template and the parameters to to actually draw that template are given in the tabular form right